Hello, my name is Zach Shainer, and today I'm going to talk to you about the thermal depolymerization process, and how it might be a replacement for other forms of unconventional oil, and possibly even standard oil itself. Now, I want to start by defining what exactly unconventional oil is. And it's quite simple, really. It's any oil that doesn't come from your standard oil well. Examples of this include the oil sands we talked about in class, oil shale, and what I'm talking about, the thermal depolymerization process. Now, the unfortunate side of unconventional oil is that there's a couple problems you have to deal with. The most important of those being it's more difficult and more expensive to extract than standard oil. In addition, the quality of the fuel we receive from these sources is generally of a lower quality than that of standard oil. Moving on, what is the thermal depolymerization process? It's a man-made process that mimics the natural process of creating fuels. And of that, it uses intense heat and pressure to break down organic material into usable fuels. The best part of this is that the thermal depolymerization process only takes a couple hours, whereas in nature, it takes far too long to be of practical use to us. Now, research into this type of process had been going on for some time, but it wasn't until the 1980s when Paul Baskus created the first break-even version of this process, meaning the amount of energy he put into the process equal the amount of energy he gained in the fuel from the process. So, from that point, the Changing World Technologies took it and created the thermal conversion process, which is the official thermal depolymerization process that they created, and put it into practice at their plant in Carthage, Missouri. Now, on to the process itself. There are three main steps in thermal depolymerization. First, you prep the materials or organic input and by mixing it with water and grinding it into smaller pieces. From there, this mix is fed into the first thermal reactor, where the process heats it to about 250 degrees Celsius at a constant volume. The constant volume is important because as the water boils and turns into steam, it creates that intense pressure needed to break down the hydrocarbons. In fact, this first step functions much like a pressure cooker. Afterwards, when the steam is vented and the pressure is released, it leaves behind minerals and hydrocarbons. These hydrocarbons are then shuttled to the next reactor, where they are once again heated to further break them down. After this, those fuels are sorted and sent off to be used. Now, the energy efficiency of this process is about 85%, meaning that 85% of the energy contained in the organic inputs is extracted at the end. Now, the cool part is that other 15% that doesn't get extracted for use as fuels can actually be recycled and burned to help heat the reactors of the process, meaning this process helps self-fuel itself and is thereby more efficient. Now, that process is all well and cool and everything, but it doesn't do us any good if it's not economically viable. So let's take a look at the numbers. Now, in the, over the couple years that the Carthage plant was operating, the maximum profit they reported was about $4 per barrel of oil produced in, about, in 2005. Now, in 2005, oil cost on average, about $60 per barrel. So they were producing thermal depolymerization light oil at about $56 per barrel. Fortunately, this was with an Energy Policy Act credit, which isn't always guaranteed, meaning the prices aren't always guaranteed to be that low. And in fact, the price of thermal depolymerization oil can reach up to about $80 per barrel. Now, comparing that to oil sand pricing, Standard mining of oil sands costs about $70 to $85 per barrel of oil, whereas the SAG process can be anywhere from $50 to $80 per barrel. So looking at the range of prices, both, process, both thermal depolymerization and the oil sands have the, potential, have the potential to be fairly cheap, but they still can be both expensive. In fact, looking at with today's prices, both of them aren't viable price-wise because you'd be operating mostly at a loss since the current day oil price is about $50 per barrel. So what can we conclude from this? I can conclu we can conclude that thermal depolymerization isn't a good substitute for mining oil sands, as being about the same cost, there's several positive effects from thermal depolymerization. That being, the inputs can be almost anything organic, including solid waste from society, which we already produce a ton of. It does not disturb the environment through mining like oil sands, and the process helps fuel itself, making it more efficient. So, while neither oil sands nor thermal depolymerization is viable with today's oil prices, I believe that should oil prices start to rise again, thermal depolymerization will be a viable, unconventional oil source that could replace oil sands and other sources of unconventional oil.